So then guys, today is a day I've been looking forward to. It is, oh, it's heavy, unboxing day of the M4 Max MacBook Pro. This is the 14 inch version, and there's gonna be a lot of upgrades inside of this. I can guarantee you that. So today I'm gonna to compare it to the M3 Max. Now we know that the M4 Max is gonna be having a lot of performance changes, but there's a lot of other changes too. I know a lot of other YouTubers out there are gonna be showing you Geekbench, Cinebench, all of that great stuff. And I might show you one or two of those, but obviously there's a lot of other upgrades out there for you guys, what you need to know about. And we're gonna cover them today. And first of all, let's get started then with the unboxing and let's see if this is any different. Well, I hate to disappoint, it's very similar to the M3 Max MacBook Pro in its box with everything that we've got inside of it. You can see right here, with cables and whatnot, chargers, and then obviously taking it out of the paper wrap, exactly the same, and so on and so forth, and it's ready to go. And after spending about half the morning setting this all up and getting apps and everything on it, let's do a comparison then, first of all, between both of these MacBook Pros. And I think one of the most obvious changes, what Apple talked about a little bit, but I've noticed it straight away getting it out of the box and maybe you can even see it here. And that is the brightness, the SDR brightness. Oh yeah, it is definitely brighter here on the M4 Max MacBook Pro, the M4 family. And let's talk about some of those other little changes too. So like I said, guys, the brightness is definitely better here with the new M4 MacBook Pros. Apple are now promising that we can get 1000 nits SDR compared to the 600 nits that we got before on the last MacBook Pro. Obviously, XDR content can go up to 1600 nits, which is really, really impressive. But I can imagine having this better brightness, you know, outdoors and about is going to be really, really great. Obviously, here in the UK right now, we are really, really dull now. We're in the November time. So obviously, we're not going to really get much use of that brightness, I would say. But I can definitely say that, obviously, when it comes to the summer months outside, I'm going to chill outside and use my MacBook Pro. Obviously, yeah, I'm going to say that brightness is really, really going to help you guys out. It's definitely a really great upgrade to talk about. One other thing to mention about the displays, just very quickly, is obviously, there's now the option of a nano texture screen what you can actually pick for for the MacBook Pro so obviously this will help with reflective if you're out and about and obviously with that really strong brightness and also the nano texture screen this is really really going to be great to see but it will cost you a fair bit to actually get that upgrade of a nano texture on your actual display. So then guys, if you're thinking of getting yourself one of these brand new M4 Macs, or maybe you want to keep your current Mac right now, and you want to keep it speedy and in tune, well then you should download the new Clean My Mac the new Clean My Mac is an all-in-one solution designed to optimize your Mac's performance. With its powerful features like Smart Care, it can help you free up space, look for threads, speed up your system, update your apps you use, and even keep your files organized all with just one click. And can even find up to 27% more junk on your Mac than before with the cleanup tool. The new Clean My Mac app has new features like one called My Clutter that is a new duplicate file finder and can even find photos that may look similar to your other ones so you can clear these up. It even has the assistant tool so you can monitor like the battery life of your MacBook or it can even tell you your Mac's overall health status. And it is definitely the best Mac health monitoring tool that I have ever used. And then best of all, you can test out the new Clean My Mac app with the seven day trial with all the information that's in the description below of this video. So get tidy with Clean My Mac your way. But moving on, let's talk about the actual body of the MacBook Pro, so if there's any sort of changes right here. Now, for some of you eagle eye viewers out there may have noticed that my keyboard looks a bit different. And the main reason behind this is that this M3 Max MacBook Pro, I actually bought this earlier on in the year when I was in the States. I was in Best Buy, and it was one of those sort of ones that had been returned back to the shop, and somebody didn't want it. I'd like one count on the battery counter, and it was a really, really great price to get. So, you know, I bought it, knew that I'd have to get on with the US keyboard uh, compared to the British keyboard. Keyboard, and to be honest, they're not that much different to be fair out there. So that is why the keyboard looks a bit different here between both these models. But obviously that is literally probably the only change that you can probably see here. And to be deadly honest, overall, there isn't that much difference. I would say that your fingers, you know, if you touch the actual back of these MacBook Pros, you're gonna get the same sort of fingerprint sort of marks or things like this. The ports are all in the exact same position this time. There's no differences. The actual weight feels about the same on both these MacBook Pros. So overall, 
overall, really, I'm gonna say there are no differences. Everything what's changed mainly is to do with other parts of the MacBook Pro, including the actual performance of the M4 Max compared to the M3 Max. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna go to fully depth about benchmarks and things like this, but you can see here the difference what I got in Geekbench sort of scores. But obviously the M4 Max is far better than the M3 Max. Just look at the single core score here. I got 4,082 compared to 3,158. And then look at the M4 Max M multi-core, 26,854 compared to my 21,021 in my M3 Max. And then after this, I did the same test again in GPU to see what the speed would be right here. And it's quite interesting to see with this metal graphics scores that obviously we've got the same amount of GPU cores, but we're getting around about 25% or over 25% gain here in GPU performance, what is incredible over the M3 Max. It's definitely the biggest leap in graphical performance that we've had in the previous generations. And then finally, what I also did for you guys, I just did a little speed test here to see how fast the actual drives were inside these both these MacBook Pros. And yeah, you can see they're really the same here. In case you wanted to actually know, both of these versions are, I'm going to say, the bin version, the standard versions of the M4 Max. So this is the lowest configuration what you can actually get in GPU cores and also inside of CPU cores. So what I'm talking about then for the actual CPU, they're both made up of 10 performance cores and they've also got four performance cores inside of them. So they're exactly the same sort of core count what I've actually bought this time around for both of these models. And then for RAM inside of these MacBook Pros, well, both of them have 36 gigabytes of RAM in both of them there. So that's what I've got with this M4 Max, the bin sort of version. But you can configure this up. If you went for the 16 core CPU version and also the 40 core GPU, you can actually have a baseline of 48 and you can pick 64 or even 128 gigabytes of RAM. But with the M3 Max, if you actually had the bin version, what you could actually do then was that you could actually, actually configure this up to 96 gigabytes of RAM. There was the 128 gigabyte version too, obviously if you went for the full 16 core version of the M4 Max, but this time around it is a bit different. That obviously you only can pick the 36 gigabytes, but you can't give more RAM unless you have a more powerful CPU inside of it. And I think that is a little bit disappointing, I'm gonna say for my part, that we can't actually have, say, less sort of performance in cores and have more RAM, you actually have to upgrade to have the more powerful kind of CPU inside of it to actually get the more RAM. Whereas the old M3 Max, you could actually configure this up to obviously have more RAM inside of it. It wasn't just one option available. So that's one thing I say I'm a little bit disappointed to actually see here. But one thing there is a difference with, and that is memory bandwidth. With the 14 core version of the M3 Max we got here, we got up to 300 gigabytes memory bandwidth, but then if you pick the 16 core version, you actually got up to 400 gigabytes memory bandwidth. But then with the M4 Max, the great news is this has gone up over by 25%. So what we actually have now is 410 gigabytes of memory bandwidth inside of this. What is really, really great to see from Apple, they've given it a bit more love there. That's more than the top spec of the M3 Max. But if you go for the top core version, the 16 core, well, you get even more memory bandwidth there. You actually get a total of 546 gigabits of memory bandwidth, what is great to see. But then the next question is, obviously, we tested out the speed of the storage. You're probably wanting to know then, well, how much storage can we actually pick for these models? What's the differences? Well, funny enough, there is no differences whatsoever. And this is across the whole M4 line, as you can see right here. The great news is, is if you pick yourself an M4 Max or an M3 Max and just go from the standard configuration, then obviously you will get one terabyte of storage built into it. So there is a way to get 512 gigabytes of storage if you fiddle around with the configurator if you know, if you go from a say an M4 Pro to M4 Max, you can do that too. But overall though, I'd say the base line sort of storage, what you're gonna go into the shop and pick it up at, is probably gonna come out at one terabyte. And obviously, you know, you can actually configure this all the way up to eight terabytes if you want to do that, what is great to see again from Apple. But just be aware then obviously that more storage actually costs a lot more money to do these kind of upgrades and you're better off with external storage. And that nicely leads on to talking about the ports on these MacBook Pros. Now on the M3 Max, like the predecessors in the M2 Max and the M1 Max, we've got Thunderbolt 4 ports here. We've got three of them. And these ports are really, really fast. You know, the USB 4 speed and they give up to speeds up to 40 gigabits 
per second, what is really, really great to see. But Apple, for the first time, with the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, not the normal M4, then you can actually get Thunderbolt 5 ports. You get the same amount of ports on the actual MacBook Pro. You get three of them, but the difference is that you get Thunderbolt 5 speeds. So this is up to 120 gigabits per second. What's well, absolutely incredible to get here on a MacBook Pro. Obviously, more accessories are going to have to come out to utilize this, but this does future-proof even more if you've got yourself an M4 Max. It's definitely a worthy upgrade to get that. So obviously, as more bits and pieces, more hard drives and accessories come out, you are going to be ready for that. So this is really, really great to see that Thunderbolt 5 has come along to the M4 Pro and also the M4 Max. So another port that we love about the MacBook Pros is the SD card slot. And obviously the SD card slot is an SDXC port on here. So if you do have to take something out your camera and whip it into the port here, this is really, really great to see. But then how about the HDMI port and then obviously support for loads of monitors running from your MacBook Pro? Well, the great news is the M4 Max, just like the M3 Max, can support up to four monitors. Obviously that's one monitor on the HDMI port and then obviously three other monitors on the other USB-C ports, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5 ports. And then of course, depending on how strong your resolution is, if it's 6K, you know, 8K, 4K, it does limit the amount of kind of sort of displays that you can actually connect in. I'm not going to go into the full details about that, but you can check that out on Apple's website to be the exact precise amount of sort of displays you can and obviously the resolutions and everything like that. So you can have a mess around with that there. Next of all, we have Mac OS 15. Both of these MacBooks can run Mac OS 15, no problems whatsoever. And of course, we've now have got Apple Intelligence too. And this is really, really great to use. We've got all those great new writing sort of tools and things like this and like the cleanup tool with photos. And obviously the M4 Max absolutely smashes that. There's going to be no problems whatsoever. There's definitely enough RAM, definitely enough horsepower in both these machines. So you've got nothing to worry about there. And obviously for Mac OS updates, I would actually say that probably you're going to easily get, say, another six years years with the M3 Max and probably about another seven years with the M4 Max. So this is going to be great to see going into the future. And obviously more Apple intelligence features I'm sure are going to be available on both of these machines in the future. But then moving on then to the battery life and also charging, what kind of upgrades are we seeing right here? Well, the standard M4 is actually giving us a battery boost in battery life this time round. But what we didn't actually see is actually any boost inside the M4 Max to the M3 Max. We still get the same claims up to 18 hours of battery life in both of these MacBook Pros. Well, it's still really, really impressive. You've got to remember that these are, well, they are the most powerful laptop chipsets out there right now, the M3 Max and the M4 Max. And yet you can still get 18 hours of battery life in a 14 inch model like this. What is really, really impressive to see. So yeah, that is really Really, really great news to have there. Obviously, it's not going to be much more battery life. I wasn't really expecting to see that because obviously we are getting far more performance as we saw like Geekbench, things like this. We're even more powerful than the likes of saying getting an M2 Ultra. What is really, really impressive to see out of an M4 Max, but yet we still actually maintain that same battery life as the M3 Max. What's well, actually the same battery life as the M2 Max and also the M1 Max. So you've got to see it like that and how far we've actually come along in this sort of journey now with Apple Silicon that Apple managed to retain that exact same battery life in the same design that we've managed to have now for the last four generations of this MacBook Pro. But then for charging, you can still use the MagSafe charging, what is great to see. And obviously you can use that fast charge ability with the charger in the box or something a bit more powerful if you wanted to do that up to 96 watts. So that's really, really great to see that Apple are providing this. And then for pricing and value, well, the great news is that even though we're getting all this extra performance out the M4 Max, and we've only been a year since the M3 Max, well, Apple have kept the same prices for the base configuration. So if you go for the base amount of storage, base M4 Max over the M3 Max, and obviously the base amount of RAM, well, the great news is you get it at the exact same price. You get that better screen, you get Thunderbolt 5, you're getting all those great upgrades inside of this device. And I think that's absolutely incredible that you're actually going to be getting that. Especially the fact of too, if you look here at the price of an M4 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro and compare it to the $4,000 of the Mac Studio, and yet we're getting a screen, battery, a portable 
portable device, and this is yet more powerful in CPU performance, and the ports are faster too. That is crazy to see, that this is a great buy to actually have on your table, on your desk right now, and then obviously to take it around with you too. It's really, really impressive to see. But overall, in my opinion, I think the M4 Mac is definitely a great leap in the right direction. I absolutely do love this, and it is really, really powerful. Like Apple say, it's the most powerful sort of, um, you know, laptop out there right now, the most powerful MacBook, and it's great to see the improvements that they've put inside of this, and I would actually say it's definitely a worthy upgrade if you've got something like an M1 Max, potentially. You know, this is actually the starting stage where I'm going to say that you're actually going to start to see a difference here if you actually trade to that end and brought one of these. Don't get me wrong, the M1 Max is still a great device out there, 14-inch or 16-inch one, but there is that option now that finally I could say that, you know, if you do feel that you need a bit more power over that, then yeah, this is definitely a worthy upgrade. But for M2 Max, M3 Max, I probably wouldn't say too much on it. Obviously, if you can get yourself the M4 Max um, at a great deal, buy it. And obviously, if you can get the M3 Max at a far lower cost today, you know, if it's going to be saving you like five or $600 compared to the M4 Max, I'd still personally buy one of these because obviously, this is going to be great for many, many years to come. But really, guys, that is my opinion here, my first initial opinion on the M4 Max to the M3 Max. What do you think of the new device that we have right here? Do you think it's a great upgrade over the M3 Max? Let me know in the comments below. And also, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons like we've done today, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.